talking about <laughs> things that are may or may not be as uh, priceless. Uh, VC Media, which is one of our. <laughs> Let's hear this. <laughs> um, we've, it felt, we've both seen it, yeah. Yeah, it, it felt like, you know, I, I don't... I, <laughs> so it's not a game show, but it is a game show, according to the creators. Basically, four VCs come on. They debate on to like the hottest topics of the week, like TikTok, YC's Demo Day, Snowflake, IPO. While doing so, because... You know, they're not on equity, but they're on a show that's about VCs. They like can bring in their portfolio companies and mention that as kind of like the what gives me the right to talk about this. And the winner gets to do a monologue for 30 to 45 seconds at the end. Can be about a company, can be about innovation, et cetera, et cetera. It has sponsorships. <laughs> But see, if we give the incentive and we're not, I, th I think like, you know, we're, we're not, the, we're a little snippy and I don't think that primetime VC was snippy. I, I urge people, I mean, I urge Danny to watch it and I really want his take on it at the next episode. <laughs> Alex. I mean, look, there's a reason why we don't have we've never really done more than one guest on the show to keep the host to guest ratio very high. It's because a lot of VCs, not very funny. It's all, I'll leave it there. I was going to say, I'm happy there's a home for everyone, you know, for people who want to watch VCs debate each other, do it. It's a, they, they, their tagline deserves a snap. It's called the show of accredited banter. All right. Two points for that. So, I mean, podcasting is a, a big darn deal around the world. And as a non-podcast consumer, mostly, it's always been a bit of an enigma to me. Um, but what we've seen is uh, the rise of kind of micro media brands attached to non-traditional companies. And Andreessen, of course, is no, um, uh, is no slouch here. They've had a podcast that I'm sure you've heard of. Now they're doing a bunch more. They started podcasting back in 2014. So this is a long time coming. Uh, and about a year ago, they launched a show called 16 Minutes. It was, shockingly enough, about 16 minutes in length. Call it the Millennial 60 Minutes. Uh, anyways, they're about 40 apps in now, and they're going to go ahead and and keep doing that. They found kind of product market fit, they claim, with the show. And so I, I think this matters not much that Andreessen's doing a thing with podcasts and doing more of them. But it just goes to show that VC firms, once a capital repository with a couple of people and some assistants, have become you know full-service firms and now also, to some degree, media companies. So we're seeing the... the um, the, I don't know, the agglomerization or the blobberization of, of VC into more and more areas, trying to do thought leadership, trying to build their brand, trying to get deal access and deal flow. Uh, it's a very competitive space and money is no longer anything close to sufficient to get into the best deals. So I, I'm not surprised by this. I'm not going to listen to it, um, but that's where I stand. Um, <laughs> um, I was going to say the kind of the person who launched the 16 Minutes podcast is Sonal Chokshi, who's great. She's really good at her job and she's an interesting human. I recommend following her on Twitter. Um, I was excited to see kind of like a network being formed within Andreessen. Excited might be a strong word, but it's cool to see that bet happening to your point, Alex. I think it's more than a one off. I think a lot of VCs ha have admitted to me off the record that we do a podcast. It's not great, but we need to do it just so we can say we did one. Um, and so I'm always here for people who are actually going to try and not just do something easy. Why do they need to do a podcast? I don't understand that. Someone explain that to me. Because it's part of because it's part of your job. You don't count. Why do VCs need to do a podcast? I guess just you know your personal brand, dare I say. And so it's I don't know. It's it's it's, it's an easy way to riff and be another way that people end up in you in your inbox is probably the reason. I don't know. The number of VCs that are sufficiently interesting as to kind of consistently draw our attention are people like, you know, Tomas Tungas from Redpoint, who runs a great blog on kind of the SaaS space, and he's fantastic. I mean, but I mean, are, are most people in the VC world sufficiently interesting as to be podcast material? Most journalists aren't. <laughs> but we're being honest, you know, so I, I'm not trying to I be appreciate rude to VCs. That. I appreciate that, Alex. I agree. I think like there's like the running joke of like 
you you don't have to stop stack post everything. You can just tweet about it or you can just not say it to anyone. Like every one of your ideas is not worth a sub stack post or an article. And 